Hi there. As you can see here by my left hand side of my screen, I have a web form and then on my right hand side, I have a Google sheet, uh, like an Excel sheet, but it's by Google. So I have this here. And then when I go ahead and fill in information on my web form, right? Remember, don't just watch, subscribe. So uh, this is a form. I'm going to fill an R2, say tech. Then I say, let's say 25, mail, USA, number, let's say uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then an R2 online at gmail or oh, gmail.com, and then enter a message hi there, teach me coding all right and then i click on submit and when i do that you can see the, the form has been successfully submitted and when you look at the form here you can see the information we just entered including the today's date the name and all the fields have been filled on separate columns on my Google Sheet. You can see everything is there. And this is not the first information. I've already entered previous information here. You can see this one was entered on the 16th of September, 2023. And then this one was entered today. So um, I'll show you how you can do everything. And I'll also link the GitHub repository for this project, the code and everything in the description below. So make sure you give a star to the GitHub repository, uh, the project when you find it on GitHub. This particular first video is for vanilla JavaScript. I will provide a link also to a video where you can watch how to do the same thing if you're using React framework or you're using Next.js to build your own site. And I'll also encourage you to please hit that like button if, if, this, if this video proves to be helpful to you and subscribe to the channel to help me grow it's very very crucial that you encourage me to keep creating this content and also you know make youtube recommend this kind of content to other people who might be in need of such materials so without much talk let's get into how you can go ahead to achieve this the first thing you notice is that we have our form here you can create your form however you want any number of fields you want 100 fields one field or two fields it all depends on you but let's go over to the coding i'm just going to drag this and put it in here and now you can see our code in here and um, you can see my index.html and everything index.js my style and my background image here so i just want you to look at this form now as i said the code has been provided for you so i'm not really going to start typing the code from the beginning because i've created my web page a standard web page and i've created a form here at the beginning of the form to the end of the form you can see the form has an id my form it has an action i'm going to explain this action a bit later we have our div here that contains the label first name and then contains and contains an input now i need you to take note of this for each of these input fields there is a name to it all right this is very crucial that you understand this there is a name here first name then name here is also this so take note of that this is the crucial part of the form because the name you're using here is what you're also going to use in the code that makes this transfer of data from the website form onto the Google Sheet possible. Okay, so to make that even more, to make that even easier, I've made these uh, columns to have the same case sensitive naming as the input field. So you can see this input field here for first name. It has a name value of first name that for last name has the same thing age the same thing although this um this header here for the columns doesn't really affect it doesn't really count here but i just did this for you to to make the code easier to read so as i said i provided the code for this you can just simply copy the code 
and go through this you understand how to go about this you mustn't enter all the fields that i've created but i did this so that i can elaborate extensively how this works for so something like this selector sorry i'm gonna show this for something like this where you have various options that's where you have a select select field you have different options the name is written inside the select element not in the options the value that is going to be selected by the user is just one of the options here so this select select is going to is going to grab that option that you have entered and also i have that an input an input here which is for submission all right and i have the type submit i have the value submit right this is for the submit button here so we are done actually done with the html part of this the next thing is we imported our css as you can see here in the head and this is our style of css so this is just where we style the, the form right no big deal you can style it however you want yeah. or you can replicate what i have here and then for the javascript i'm going to explain a little bit further here later on but let's go into linking our form with the google sheet here so once you have created your form come over to your google form so i'm going to create a new a new google sheet sorry i'm going to create a new spreadsheet from google sheets so you can name it anything say form data and then you can just put in headers all right so for me i'm going to put date first name i have last name age gender country phone email and we have message so you can of course format this field however you want for example i could say um, i want to edit this make it bold and make the colors to be oops maybe make it blue and then increase this a bit so that it will look a bit finer the next thing you need to do is to come over to this extension here you're going to see apps script so you click on app script and you let it load you just let it load once you let it load it's going to show you you're currently signed in as this and click ok and then you see a function here inside this code .js. I'm just going to select everything and I'll delete it. Now I've already provided the code that you need to put here. All right. So I'm just going to copy and paste it and I'll quickly explain it. But if you don't understand fully what the code still does, I encourage you to just copy the code and probably paste it in your chat GPT or paste it in Google's BAD or maybe uh, Bing AI and the code will be properly broken down for you. I think that's the best way to do that. But for now, I'm just going to copy this existing code just and I'm going to paste it into this place. So what does this code do? This is a function. So it goes to the Google Sheets and it, it takes the sheet's name, right? You can name your sheets into whatever name you want. For example, uh, page one. If I do page one, then I know that here I'm going to change my sheet name to page page one okay so uh okay go back all right it goes and grabs the sheets all right that's this this form data here that we've created the google sheet we've created and then it, it, it makes sure that the sheet is a, is in existence if it's not in existence the sheet name is not in existence it returns this error that sheets is not found all right so it grabs a row after the first row right after this first row it grabs the second row that's where you have get last row plus one you create an empty array here first of all which is called row data it's going to push a new data into it it's getting the new data yeah. from our web form so this this is not compulsory i just wanted to add this i added this personally because i want the data here when i come each time i can see that okay this is the date when this data was collected from the user all right row data dot push new date 
you can go ahead to make this up to hours, seconds, and minutes, whatever you want. So push first name from our web form. First name, last name, age, gender, country, phone number, email, and any other data you have entered. Then we have sheets.getrange, new row, one plus one, set values, row data. So what, what is happening here is that this code here is simply going to take the data that is coming from our web form and it's going to fill it into each of these row. So when it has successfully filled in this data, it is going to return using this context service dot create text output. It's going to return this message back to our front end to tell us that oh, we have successfully received this message and. Uh, will get back to you so this is left for you to fill whatever information you want to fill here you can change this but remember that each time you change the message here you are going to have to redeploy this and use the new link created to put as the action of your web form anyway once you're done with this you click on save the next thing is you're going to click on deploy once you click on this drop down for deploy you're going to see new deployment you click on new deployment so you click on this select web app and then you can add a description here if you wish then you select execute as you leave it as yourself which is your email address will be there now there's this option who has access put it on anyone so that anyone can actually submit data into that form into your google sheet sorry so once you're done you click on deploy So you can see it's updating the deployment. Now you're gonna see this web app requires your, you to authorize the data, authorize. You're gonna authorize and once it comes out this way, you select the email address that is the one you used in creating the Google Sheet. Then you're gonna see this uh, message, warning message here. You click on advanced. You click on go to untitled project or which, whatever the name of the project you're doing it. It's going to tell you on save. Just continue. Allow. So once, you're, once you've done this, you can see there is a URL for your web app here. You're going to copy this URL and click on done. Next thing is for you to go back to your code and you're going to go to your form and this action that is here you remember that a form we have probably have an id but it will normally have an action and it will have a method so you can see we are doing having a method of post next thing is you're going to put this if you downloaded this code you're going to see this action so replace the action there with yours so i'm just going to click this and we've saved this now you see that we have an empty form here but now when we go back to our website now web form we fill a data here and now to check and you click on submit you can see submitting form and once it's done when you come over to your form data now That has not reflected. Let's see the reason why it didn't reflect. I'm gonna save this again and we'll reload, reload our page. And then we'll click submit. And let's see our form now. And as you can see, all we need to do is to save our code and reload the, the web form so that well, what has been done will reflect. You can see our information has now been entered successfully on our form. So you can use this anyhow you want to collect whatever kind of data you want to collect. So the next thing you have to look at is our index.js. What is happening here is simply that there is a show modal message here. So the modal that you're seeing when 
the, when this information is sent to the form, you get this. This is the show model function there. And then this is, of course, we are listening to our submit button. And when it submits, there's a prevent default so that the page does not reload. And then there's a show model, first show model that shows an information that the form is submitting, submitting form. And then we use this X, uh, XML HTTP request, right, to make the post. So when the, the button is clicked, the submit button is clicked, it prevents defaults. Next, it brings up this model to show that the form is submitting. Next, we use this to actually run the run the uh, XML HTTP request, right? It's a post request and it's posting this action. This action is the action you find here, right? So it's, it's running that action. The reason why we're actually using this, you could actually run your run this this project without this whole this code here. In fact, without everything here. But the problem with that would be that, for example, let's see what happens when we remove our JavaScript. Okay, when we commented out our JavaScript, and then we save our code and we reload our page. See that when we submit our form, there is no model, but of course the information still comes out that form submission was successful. Thank you. And we'll get back to you. And then when you go to your form data, the information was actually filled in. It was filled in, but the problem now is that each time a user submits data on your site, the person is going to be faced with this black screen that has this information here. So the person ha has to click back again, all right, to go back to your page. And this is not a good user experience. That is why I have to I have to use JavaScript to intercept that message that comes back, all right? That's what this JavaScript is doing. It's intercepting the message that is coming back to say, okay, when the code here runs, after the code runs and returns this information back to us, take, pick up that information and display it to the user on a modal. That's more beautiful. The user can just close it and continue with their journey. Okay, so basically that is how you get to do it. This code has been provided also in the uh, repository. So I'm not really gonna explain this too much. You can always copy this code all right just copy everything and then go to your chat gpt paste it there and ask for the explanation and it's going to yeah. break down what the whole code is doing all right so i've provided the link to this in the description make sure you hit that like button subscribe to the channel and of course share this video also to others so that people can also find this helpful the next video which i'm linking is going to show you how you can achieve this same thing using a react website okay so thank you for watching remember to follow me on social media at natu tech whether on instagram or twitter and um, other social media and also buy me a cup of coffee if you find this quite helpful there's a link to do that in the description panel below thank you for watching thank you for sticking with me for this and i'll see you on the next one bravo happy coding and respect